Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're taking a look at a very small escape room style game. This is Dexcape, The Curse of the Sphinx. In this card game, or card based game I should say, for one to six players, all the players are going to be going through a story, solving puzzles, and doing a variety of things in order to escape in order to win the game and try to do so as quickly as possible. There are a lot of different game systems out there that do these kinds of escape room uh, games and I, I like most of them and I really do like this system here. Deckscape is neat because it gives you just a small box, just a big deck of cards as you can see here and you are going to be using that to solve puzzles. They present you images, you try to do the best you can, you flip over the card usually, and there's the answer. You got it? Great. You didn't? Mark an X somewhere and keep on going. So you don't get stuck. There's also that to this system. Uh, obviously here, the review for this is not really going to show you too much of the contents. That would spoil the game for you if you choose to go out there and play this one. And I have played a few of the other ones in this system. Uh, the first one, uh, Test Time is uh is one i really enjoy and then i've played a couple more after that there are some i haven't played in the deckscape line but this is the newest one and i wanted to uh tell you what i think of it all right so basically i'm not really gonna cut to the table here we're just gonna go right to what i thought of the game and hopefully that'll be enough information to help you decide if this is something you might want to pick up and play yourself Alright, so before I tell you what I think of all the different parts here, I'll give you a quick look at what this is going to uh, be like when you open it up. Okay, again, I'm not really spoiling anything here. You're going to have a deck of cards like this. It tells you a warning on the front and a warning on the back. And then you start from the number one card. You take that, you're going to read it. It tells you to look at the back, you look at the back. The next one tells you a little bit of a story. It explains what this is. It's inspired by real escape rooms around the world. And then this card, which is as far as we're going, is going to set up the story for you. You are on an expedition, or rather just visiting the pyramids. And then uh, something's going to happen here that's going to tumble you headfirst into an adventure. In which part of the, uh, the adventure entails going uh, sort of toe-to-toe -to -toe with a mummy. Or having a mummy chase you around, alright? That's as far as I'm spoiling, which is again nothing past the third card there. So I'm going to start with the things I did like about this uh, game, specifically this one escape room type adventure. And uh, we're going to start with thematic ties. I like the setting here. Now this one has a real Goosebumps vibe to it. Uh, that would be a book series for young adults or children. Uh, and, and this one very much feels like that. Like those kinds of adventures, the things that happen in it are uh, of, that, of that style. The setup, the location, the amount of depth they go into, which is very superficial. That's how this feels. It feels like a Goosebumps book chopped up into different cards and different puzzles and activities and things like that. Which is not bad. I like that. The aesthetics here are very nice. Great card illustrations. Very good card quality as well. So the whole thing is nicely produced. They do have a small issue on some of the cards and you are going to get for that you should see this shrink wrapped to the outside of your box that lets you know when you get to card 58 you should read this because we had a little bit of a printing issue it's understandable and i'm glad that they included this instead of just letting people deal with it so no problem there the game length is nice this is about an hour an hour and ten depends how long it takes you to solve some of those puzzles and i think that's a good game length it's a good session time the ease of play. It's very nice. Several times in the game, and this is something that the first uh, Deckscape game, Test Time, did. Several times in the game, they are going to split the deck into a few different smaller decks. And they allow you, by doing that, to sort of tackle multiple puzzles at the same time. At that point, you could have somebody take the green deck, and I take the yellow deck, and I'm working on the top card while they're working on their top card. You can have everybody talking and solving together different things. I like it. Um, this one does a sort of smaller to smaller decks multiple times, whereas the first game, the test time, 
did it once early on in the game and basically took the entire deck and split it into four chunks. So I like the, that style. That really works for me. Um, and that's pretty much it for my positives, my big positives. Now, so I have one that is uh, so-so kind of down the middle of the road for me. That's replayability. But I'm not really talking about replayability. This is not replayable. It's not meant to be. It would be silly for me to give this a thumbs down because it isn't replayable. I am going to talk, though, about playability. And it's a little rough, the playability here. The reason for that is because these games and what I expect these games to be, maybe that's on me, right? But what I expect them to be is a bunch of little puzzles, observation puzzles, or, you know, deductive things in a little box. On uh, uh, What I got besides that, or, you know, quite a bit of that, was a lot of memory elements to it some dexterity elements to it, and they were just annoying. They got in the way of having fun. But I thought, okay, part of me thinks this is maybe geared towards children or, or um, you know, younger adults who are perhaps going to enjoy those aspects of the game. Things like having to take a card in your hand and you cannot continue progressing through the story until you flip that card onto the other side, still on your hand. So you're doing that. There, I did it. That, but you gotta be careful with it. Some people are not so good at this. I'm also sitting, being really careful, and I've already practiced it. Uh, some of them make you remember where a specific card said a specific word, and you're looking for that. Things like, like that. And those are just, again, kind of annoying and just get in the way. But the playability is overall okay. It's got a pretty good flow to it. The last thing, and that does get a little bit of a thumbs down here, is the tactics and strategy and luck in the game. Some of the gameplay, as I said, seems aimed at children. Yet, some of the puzzles are pretty hard to figure out. They are not kid puzzles. This is not a game that takes Deckscape and makes a version for children. That's not what this is. The uh, age on this says 12 and up, okay? But some of those puzzles are pretty nasty. I had trouble with it. People I played with had trouble with it. I then gave it to a couple of people, some of the puzzles. Didn't get it. So, I'm talking about adults here, by the way. And so I feel like there's a little bit of an issue there with a mismatch in, in target audience. If it is a game for younger adults, then I don't mind the silliness and sort of the, uh, you know, the dexterity-based sort of time wasters, that sort of thing, you know, the memory aspects. But throwing that into a game that has really nasty puzzles is going to frustrate people on the puzzles or... The inverse of that is going to frustrate people on the dexterity and memory. So that's unfortunate. It just felt like it was for a, a mixed group that would have to be really specific. So if you like the memory, you do that part. If I like the puzzles, I'll, I'll do that part. So there you go. Overall, I thought it was all right. I still like the line quite a bit. And um, I've enjoyed several of the other games, but I have to say, as of right now, I think this is my least favorite of the ones I've played. Which is unfortunate, because it's also the newest, so I'm hoping that things aren't on decline, you know? But anyway, let me give you my bottom line, alright? Here we go, bottom line. Still an excellent series of games, but the first is still my favorite, and it does feel at times like the game is trying ideas just to be different, not to be better. This is going to get a 6 out of 10 from me. I recommend the series. I definitely recommend you pick up Test Time, Deckscape Test Time if you haven't, or Deckscape Heist in Venice, which is also an excellent version of the game. And maybe try a couple of those out. And if you're still hungering for more, then I would say you can pick this one up. But heed my couple of little warnings that you're sort of, so that you know kind of what it is you are getting. There you go, everybody. Hopefully that was somewhat informational. Thanks for checking this out. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one. 
Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.